the mountaintop for the boys' first section of things today. The Upper Sandusky Rams looking to get off the schneid against a very good squad from Shelby, the MOAC champion whippets. Come to the mountaintop to take on the Upper Sandusky Rams. You have all the action coming your way on your smartphone, TV, PC, tablet, and the smart device you have. And it's coming your way next. to do than to job hunt or scramble to find your next great hire. So let Spherion do it. We say local is our superpower because we live and work where you live and work. We know the mid-Ohio job market and we're locally owned. So you won't find a partner who's more engaged and literally invested in your success. If you're ready for something better, start with Spherion. Visit us online at midohiojobs.net or call 419-747-7479. Dusky double header. Joe Baylog, Travis Berardi, still here. After all these hours, about to bring you a good one between the Upper Sandusky Rams and the Shelby Whippets. And Coach Baylog, Upper Sandusky's just had, they've had a rough season. They start off a tough loss at Willard Italy early, and then sickness hit them. Up through the Christmas break, they did more. 100% until maybe midway through the season and then they just couldn't get their footing underneath and they're playing good team after good team so you know it, it, a team that had some high hopes it just hasn't been the season they wanted yeah I mean I think that you know upper upper had a tradition of really good success over the past few years and, you know uh, you got to respond to adversity and you know the tough part for them is they've had some injuries they've had some illness and then the other hard part is you're playing in the Northern 10 this year. And the Northern 10 probably is one of the better conferences uh, in the area this year as far as those top, you know, five to six teams. Uh, so you really have to be ready to play when you come out. And, um, you know, they, they probably feel a little bit better maybe about last night. I think it was 42-34 with a very good carry team, a carry team that's, you know, going to be the – well, they're, they've got a potent, they got to – got a chance to win the uh, Northern 10. Um, but they just they just got to find a way to be consistent for 32 minutes, and that's going to be hard against a team like Shelby tonight. And speaking of the Whippets, let's take a look at their team spotlight for this evening. 17-2 under head coach Greg Galloway. 12-1, they've clinched a share of their fourth consecutive MOAC title with last night's victory over Clear Fork, but the Colts put up a fight against them. They had to pull it out 76-63. They're averaging over 70 points. That's in the top 10 in the state in Division II, giving up 58 points per game. You're thinking, oh, 58, that's a lot. It's just because they score so many points. That gives the other team extra possession. Shooting-wise, 55% from two, 33% from three, and over 72%. That is very good for this squad. Yeah, anytime you shoot over 70 plus percent as a team from the free throw line, 
that usually signifies that you are a really good basketball team. I mean, the thing with Shelby is they want to get possessions. They they want to they want to get the more possessions in a game, the better they're going to be. Um, so they they're going to try to to pressure you to get you to turn the ball over, play fast. Um, but they're also going to give up some open looks, uh, you know, at the defensive end of the floor because they're not afraid maybe to give up a few layups if they can get a few extra possessions in the game. Two of our players that we're going to spotlight from that team, uh, two of the best players in the area, the best one-two punch, I would say. These two, I could say, have Wi-Fi. They have a good Wi-Fi connection with each other. They know where each other is on the court. Alex Bruscotter and Casey Lance. Uh, I would say the smoothest one-two punch from any team in this area. You know, Brush Goddard's really, really elevated his game from a year ago. Uh, you could tell he got in the weight room and he really worked hard at it in the off season um, and has become more of a complete player. I would say a year ago, he just, he kind of looked to just be a scorer. Now he, he not only scores, he rebounds, he distributes the basketball. He's playing at the defensive end. And then Casey Lance may be the most improved player uh, in the area. Uh, you know, he's averaging double figures. Um, and, you know, you, you said the Wi-Fi connection. Uh, they've had a lot of connections that they've given uh, the Shelby crowd some highlights uh, with some dunks and plays that those two have been able to make this year. And, yeah, I think Alex Bruscotter's play has helped Casey Lance excel this season. And, yeah, that's why I brought up the whole the strong Wi-Fi connection. It's like you have one of those $100 uh, business internet connections that work, runs really fast it's because they, they just know each other so well and they go off of each other. It's yeah. not one of those. I'm, it's not a selfish relationship. Right. They give each other great looks. And Brescott has made his, his whole team better. I mean, he, he's, he uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I think last year he was just concerned about scoring. And this year, although he's scoring at a high pace, he's also getting every, all of his teammates involved uh, in their offense. Um, and that's a sign of a really good player. And, uh, you know, he's, he, he would be a nightmare on a scouting report to prepare for because he's 6'7", uh, you know, handles the ball, he shoot it, can take you inside, can rebound. Uh, he's going to be a really tough matchup for Upper tonight. And speaking of, of Upper, here is their team spotlight under head coach Jeff Winslow. And like I said, it's just been a tough year. 3-17, and 3-10 and 10 in the Northern 10. They're the 10th seed in the Division II Liberty Benton District. They moved away from that Northwest District ahead of all of our normal teams when everything got switched up. They'll take on 7th seed at Elida on the 22nd at Lima Senior. They're averaging 50 points per game, but defensively they've been struggling, giving up about 60. Uh, again, getting good looks inside. Outside, 31%, inside 51%, free throws about 57 but the, the defense just hasn't been where it used to be for the Suppers and Dusky squad. And a lot of that is, is because of their youth. Uh, you know, when you're as young as they, they've been, it, it, the, the consistency is a hard part, and that, that's right now is, you know, continue to be a problem for them through the year, just being consistent at both ends of the floor. And our player spotlight for tonight is one sophomore, Brock Montgomery, this season, 6.5 points, 2.5 rebounds, 2 assists, and 1.5 steals per game. And, uh, you know, if, if Upper's going to have any shot at getting a win, it's going to be like him. It's going to be guys like him and Cayman Isles that really needs to get some stuff established inside the paint. And the, and the hard part for tonight is Shelby's going to want to play that fast pace, so they're going to give you some open looks. And it'll be interesting to see... You know, does Upper take that quick open look, or do they try to slow the pace down a little bit, make it more of a possession game? Um, I guess it would be interesting if we were able to see the film from Kerry last night, because it seemed like maybe that became more of a kind of a possession type of game. Uh, tonight, uh, you know, Shelby's going to want to play a really fast pace, and I think Upper's got to kind of slow the pace down to stay in it. Yeah, and this Upper team's been close. They lost by two points to Colonel Crawford. Overtime, the win for I think four or five games have been one or two possession games. So they're getting close. It's just they haven't been able to go over the hump. And those four or five wins could have really helped them. They could maybe be switching from a 10 to a 7 seed in the, in well, the district and the, tournament. And but the difference is in those games, many times you just don't have that one guy that yeah. you know you could turn to that's going to make that play to, to make a game-winning play. They're still trying to find that guy. So we are just about ready for the playing of the national anthem. By, once again, by the Upper Sandusky Pep Band. They were here all day as well, like us. 
So let's send it down to the floor for the playing of the national anthem by the pep band. Great job all season long by the Upper Sandusky Pep Band. We'll see them one more time next week when Upper Sandusky wraps up their home schedule, the boys' side, against Colonel Crawford. But let's get back into things with our keys to the game. And let's take a look at the Whippets first, Coach. And uh, we we're talking about this before we came on the air. NASCAR offense, speed things up, get to the get to that 79-point mark, and that's how they do it, by speeding up other teams. You know, and... and uh, Shelby just has that ability to have a spurt, you know, going a 10-0, 12-0 spurt, and that's what you got to try to prevent um, if you're uh, upper Sandusky tonight. And now the keys to the game for the upper Sandusky Rams, and I kind of went with that school zone offense, slow things down, try and get to a lower pace, kind of like what we thought Colonel Crawford girls would do earlier, slowing things down, get this into a low-scoring game, and let it rain. They got to hit their threes tonight. They have to keep at least pace somewhat with Colonel, with uh, not Colonel Crawford, but with Shelby, because you know even a slowed down game, Shelby's probably still going to score 50 or 60 points. So they have right. to hit their shots. Yeah, that. I mean, that, again, that's going to be the question: Will Upper take that quick three, or will they try to wait a little bit and uh, you know make three or four passes before they shoot that three? Uh, but it's going to be important that they make perimeter shots tonight. And now let's take a look at the starters for the Shelby Whippets, Isaiah Ramsey, Alex Bruscotter, Casey Lance, Bryson Baker, and Max Hess. And now the starters for the Rams, Darius. Fry, Smith, Isles, and Kessler. So we're about ready to go here from the mountaintop. I want to welcome everybody watching live and free this evening on the OH Report. Let us know where you're watching from. Give us a shout out. We'll shout you out just like Deanna Ratliff. Go whip us. Thank you for watching, Deanna. Hope you enjoy this special OH Report version of Shelby Whippet Basketball. We've had, we've had a lot of Shelby games thus far in the last part of the season. Girls basketball here at Upper Sandusky at Clear Fork. We had the, Sh the Shelby boys here at Upper tonight. We've had them at Clear Fork. I'll be at probably one of the biggest games of the season, Lexington and Shelby. Already heard that's going to be a sellout. Are you going to use your coach's pass to sneak in there, Coach? I think i got to work. Oh, that's right. You gotta, you're going to be at Crestview <laughs> I'm, I'm look, watching the Firelands <laughs> Conference <laughs> champion. Yeah, you guys put me on assignment. <laughs> You'll be watching the Firelands Conference champs taking on St. Paul. I'll let you know how the game goes, though. You can watch my highlight later I will. that night. But we're underway. Alex Bruscotter gets the tip, and here we go. So Rams up, in a 2-3. Yep, starting in a 2-3 zone, which is maybe a little bit different than that they've played before. It's traditionally been a man-to-man -man team, but, you know, tough, tough really for an upper to match up man-to-man -man with Shelby. And plus... Might slow the pace of the game down a little bit. But Bruce Cotter right off the bat uh -huh. says, okay, you can give me that shot. I'll take it. It's 3-0. 
and Shelby in the their 2-2-1 two, full court pressure. Uh, steal right away. Kick back out to Bruscotter. Thought about taking another three. Now he's going to do the step, step back. back three off the front iron. Long rebound to Gavin Fry. Quickly ahead, layup good. I mean, those are the things that you got to take advantage of, those leak out layups. But now you got to make sure that you get back because uh, Shelby's really good about getting the ball out and getting it out quick in transition. Max Hess with the drive, Baker with the rebound on the backside. Um, I should let you do some play-by-play -play tonight, Joe. That was good. <laughs> Brock Montgomery, actually, he's a starter tonight instead of Holden Darris, who is not. Usually he was starting as a point guard, but out tonight from the starting lineup. So Brock Montgomery, our player spotlight in. Fry. Drug the pivot foot as we'll take a look at the rebound and put back. Holden just checked in here just now. So minute 30 into the game, he's, he's come in. Just underway here from the mountaintop. It's right side to Isaiah Ramsey. Back out to Baker. What nice pass, pass inside. Wow. That was, a, that was a tremendous pass. Great cut by Hess. Great pass by Baker. Max Hess on the board with two. Rams break the press. Darris, right side. Montgomery with a good ball fake. Gets it back out to Darris for three. Yes. So holding Darris right into the lineup, and he hits a three to cut it to two. I mean, good movement there by Upper Sandusky. Had an open shot and gave it up to get a better shot. Lance looked to answer, couldn't, but a nice wow. rebound. What passing. Pass with a great offensive rebound and another great pass. Russ Cotter with five. It's 9-5. Montgomery this time is going to release for three, and he hits. I mean, and that's a big key right there for Upper. If they're going to play, if they're going to, you know, if Shelby's going to give them those open looks, they got to be able to knock them down, and they've been able to do that early. 9-8 to score. Ball on the floor. And I believe out of bounds on upper, but good hustle there. Nearly saved as we take a look at the three by Montgomery. And like we said, they need to hit those outside shots. They're doing it early, Coach. I mean, the hard, the hard part with Shelby is they want to play that fast pace, and they just feel that there's going to be a point in the game, one or two points where they're going to make that run over a two- or three-minute span. Whippets turn it over for the first time. Darius quickly ahead. Eurostep with the scoop and the score. Upper leads 10-9. And just like that, back comes Shelby. Ramsey back out the Lance. Elbow jumper off the iron, no good. And Darius is there with the yeah. rebound. Great box out there. Coming up on the midway point of quarter number one, Upper Sandusky leading 10-9. We've seen them do this early, too, against other teams. Sticking with them or leading is Darius with the jumper. Can't get it to fall, but an offensive rebound. Back out to him. He'll try the three off the front iron, and Bruss Goddard's there with the rebound. We've seen them stick with teams early on. It's just can they continue yeah. to keep it the rest of the way. And that's that's what, you know, it's tough to do with a team like Shelby because they have, they have five guys on the floor right now that can score. And then they also have great depth. Great press break as Isles on the board. But right back at you comes Shelby. It's that NASCAR offense we were talking about. Lance in the Ramsey. And we're going to get a foul, the first foul of the game. So you see the great I mean, press break there. I mean, Upper, Upper has not been hurt by the Shelby press here early. But what, what it's, it's doing is it's speeding up the game. And as we said, Shelby's going to be willing to give up some baskets just to keep the pace of the game at a fast pace. Great inbounds play there. Ramsey using his athleticism just on a quick pass over the top. Um, so back in front go the Whippets 13-12. Brayden DeVito now into the game for Shelby. And DeVito's been a spark for him all season. When Ramsey was out a couple games, he came in and started. Um, I think he believe he shoots over 50% from three-point range. So, Darris. He's been good. Darris has come in off the bench tonight. 
and, and bit a spark right away here for the upper Sandusky Rams. Bruss Cotter with a hand in his face hits the three. Eight points for him, it's 16-14. Darris looks to answer, air balls it out of bounds. So we'll take a look at. Dar Darris kind of feeling it, but I don't know if that was a shot Coach Winslow wanted because a little bit more pressure on that shot than he would have liked. For someone like DeVito, could the confidence come over from the football season? Because oh, he really sure. came on I'm sure. and got that confidence as quarterback. I'm sure you know? when you're a quarterback as a freshman, you got to be a confident player. You you can't have uh, you can't have a lot of doubts in your mind. So uh, you know he's he's already shown he's a special player and a special athlete uh, that Shelby's going to enjoy for four years. Russ Cotter misses the three, gives Upper a chance to tie to take the lead once again in this high-scoring, fast-paced first quarter. 30 points already here. We're not even six minutes in. Three from the right, left side, no good. Rebound Shelby, and they're quickly ahead. Lance, Euro step, puts it up. Off the iron, no good. Offensive rebound, puts it back up and in. A good effort by Lance getting out quickly in transition and then getting to the offensive glass to rebound his own shot and get a put back. 18-14. Darris looking for Montgomery on the cut through. Won't find him. Back out to Holden. Right side, Montgomery gets That's another good. three. His eighth point already. Turn and a over, steal. Turnover. Montgomery, right side. Kessler's going to try the three. He hits and leaves it hanging. Timeout, Shelby. What a start. Let's take a look at that well, replay. Well, we talked early on it was going to be interesting to see if Upper was going to try to make it a possession game. And, and Shelby makes it difficult to do that because you can get some open looks in transition. And for the most part, Upper's done a great job of taking advantage of those open looks. And in the last couple of half court possessions, they've done a really good job of getting the ball reversed because uh, they feel like if they're able to reverse the basketball, Shelby's defense is going to break down a little bit, and it has, and they've been able to get that open look. The one possession that Coach Winslow was really upset with was I think when Darris came down and took that quick shot and pressured. You know, he wants to take that open shot uh, against their pressure, but he also wants to make sure that if they don't have an open shot, they show a little bit of patience in the half court, working so far here in the first quarter for them. And this is looking like the upper Sandusky of old, fast-paced, yep. hitting their threes, getting a couple steals on the other end. So if this sticks, this is going to be quite the basketball game, looking like upper Sandusky games when one John Diebler played going into the 80s because that's what they're on pace for right but, now. But I don't think Shelby's in a panic, though, either. Oh, Coach, absolutely, Co no. Coach Galloway understands this is how they like to play, and he feels that their depth's going to eventually take over. Yeah, it's just can Upper Sandusky withstand this yep. fast pace for four yep. quarters. So Whippets with possession here, 90 seconds left in the first. Bruss Cotter into the lane, turnaround jumper off the front iron. Ramsey tried to save out. it. Great like box out by the upper Sandusky Rams there. If you can, if you can limit them to one shot, um, that's another big key for them here in the game. Into the game for upper Sandusky, Justin Heilman. Loses the handle, falls on the ground, and we'll get a timeout <laughs> by Jeff Winslow, a 30-second timeout. I, this is, I, I mean, as I, like I said before in our broadcast, I wish that's one call that we would kind of eliminate because, I mean, Upper somewhat had possession, but it's a loose basketball, and, and suddenly in a loose basketball, somebody screams timeout and they give them the timeout. I'd, I'd like to see that somehow changed because um, cause you, you, really, you really don't reward a, reward a team that, for something that really hasn't happened yet. Now, situational-wise, do you like this timeout early on? 20 to um, 18. It was a 30 second timeout. Now well, you have a lot you don't yeah, use. Them, but it, I, and here's it's hard, it's hard to teach your kids this, but you know, upper maybe kind of wasted a timeout because actually if it was a jump ball, the possession would have been in their favor. Um, so with, so you wouldn't have wasted a timeout. And with a minute left though, yeah. maybe now, hey, let's if we get an open look, take it, but not let's see if we can run off time, get the last shot and get the two for possession. I mean, they just got to keep getting ball reversal, take care of it here. 
and eventually they feel that Shelby's going to gamble at something, and they're going to get an open look. So you're at 35 seconds, 30 seconds now. See if they take a last look here uh, at the end of the quarter. Because here, if you if you get the last look of the quarter, which they're not going to have, um, just missed. And Montgomery, his shot out of bounds. Yeah, you kind of wondered maybe if they were going to get the last look of the quarter because they also had possession to start the second quarter. I'm sure now that Shelby's going to take the last look of the quarter here. So again, upper back in a 2-3 zone. Shelby, Ray, and Bruscott are along the baseline. Upper did a good job of getting out there. Rimmed around yeah. three seconds. Might Gets get it ahead to Montgomery. Can he Might put it up at the here. buzzer? Might get one here. Ooh, <laughs> he almost hit it. But that's how the first quarter is going to end. Upper Sandusky leading this one 20 to 18. We'll take a break and be back with quarter number two live and free on the OH Report. have better things to do than to job hunt or scramble to find your next great hire. So let's Ferion do it. We say local is our superpower because we live and work where you live and work. We know the mid-Ohio job market and we're locally owned. So you won't find a partner who's more engaged and literally invested in your success. If you're ready for something better, start with Spherion. Visit us online at midohiojobs.net or call 419-747-7479. Second quarter action underway here from the mountaintop. Upper leading Shelby 20 to 18. Travis Berardi alongside Coach Joe Baylog as Upper turns over their first possession of the second quarter. Whippets looking to score. Carson Brubaker in for the Whippets. Left side three is short by Lance and taken out by Upper Sandusky. High scoring first quarter. Eight points for Montgomery, seven from Holden Darris as that's deflected out and stays with upper. Bruscotter leads Shelby with eight points. So the Rams get it in. Darris gets through the double team. Over the Cayman Isles, looks inside the Kessler. Puts nice. it up, too strong though, rebound. Nice, nice to cut, but tough shot to shoot over top of uh, Russ Goddard. Turnaround jumper, too strong. And the Rams once again with the possession looking to extend on their two point lead. Montgomery, deep three, hits the back iron, no good. Russ Goddard with the rebound. He'll push it ahead to DeVito. Cross court three by Brubaker, yes. Carson you know Brubaker that, off the bench. That, that possession, they they think I think they made three passes. The ball maybe touched the floor once, and, and uh, Brew was it Brubaker making yep. that? Yeah, it was Brubaker making that three. Uh, I mean, great ball movement in the full court by Shelby. 21-20 whippets here, minute and a half gone by in quarter number two. Darris just across the timeline, getting guarded by Braxton Baker, by Bryson Baker. Braxton plays for Crawford, who Upper will see next week. <laughs> and we're going to get a foul inside. That's going to go against Carson Brubaker. And believe it or not, that's only the second foul of the game, both by number twos. Nice out-of-bounds play. And Kessler gets the bounce. Just... 
set kind of in a 1-4 low, screened across and lobbed it up to Kessler. Uh, similar to the out-of-bounds play that uh, Shelby ran for uh, Ramsey uh, to get an easy bucket. 22-21 to score. Baker gets it right side to DeVito. Back around from Bruscarter to him. DeVito is going to drive baseline, get it back out. Cross court. Three in the air. Max Hess. Yes. I mean, good ball movement against the zone by Shelby. But also kind of helps upper because limits the number of possessions that Shelby can get there. But Shelby showing good patience offensively to get the shot that they wanted. Hess with an open three in the corner. And coach, both teams with four threes so far in this first half. Rams looking for that inside nice pass. look. Nice pass out. The Kessler yeah. unable to handle it, though, so he'll have to pass it uh, away. Nearly stolen. Yeah. Montgomery gets it over the Darris. Open three. Off the back iron. Long rebound taken by Brubick by Russ Cotter. I mean, Isles made a good effort to get the offensive glass. Wow. There, there's that guy. <laughs> DeVito hits the DeVito. tough three. I mean... He's, he's kind of been automatic coming off the bench uh, with those that three-point shooting. And right in transition too, Coach. Look at this. Just one quick pass. Just enough distance between him and the defender to get the ball up despite his height disadvantage. He yeah. hits. And he's shooting 48% from three, which is outstanding, and, and even more outstanding when you're just a freshman. So quick timeout here by Coach Winslow. As we said, the thing that Shelby does is they have that term that's been used, spurtability, where they can go in spurts and just kind of knock you out. So Coach Winslow trying to stop this run right here with the timeout. Uh, Shelby coming out in their patented 2-2-1 full court pressure, which so far uh, Upper's done a good job of attacking that and getting some open looks. Tawana Cox rooting for Shelby. Nice skip pass. Sam Smith into the lane. Gets it to Isles, puts uh, it up, no good. I mean, good, good look, just got it blocked inside. Max Hess gets it to Baker as he backs it out. I mean, interesting right now, Brushcott are not in the game. Great passing up to Lance, can't get it to go though. I mean, good pass inside to that short corner or some, or some coaches, and in Lance's case, called the dunker spot. Um, but not able to finish the play at the rim. Nice, nice step through inside. by Isles. You know, he's had two good looks, um, just not able to convert. Now, it's what we talked about earlier, a Shelby's ability to get the ball out quickly, that off of that defensive rebound, and a great athlete in uh, DeVito um, running the floor and finishing a play. But you can't leave Kessler open. He's got eight, it's 29-25. But also the trust from Shelby to where you can get two or three guys to run out yep. and trust that, you know, the man to get the rebound to find them quickly. And an unforced error by Shelby, they'll give it back to upper down four. Heilman and Montgomery will check back in for the Rams. 29-25 the score here with 337 left in the half. Ten combined threes. As we'll get a foul off the inbounds. Max Hess, his first team second. And you like to see it. 29-25 in the second quarter and only three fouls. Yeah. And only six combined turnovers as well. This has been. As we said, cleanly uh, upper, game. upper has done a good job of handling this 2-2-1 two, two, full court pressure. Nice Great pass. pass. Layup good. 5-0 run. Has Upper back so, to within two. So Coach Winslow did what he wanted out of that timeout. S slowed that run down. Uh, has gotten back out of it. Now you look ahead and they're going to get a breakout layup here. And we're tied. 7-0 run by Upper. Brock Montgomery with 10 points. First in the double digits. Casey Lance only has two thus far. Gets it over to Baker. Under three to play in the half. 
And now you see Shelby slowing things down a bit, well, trying to get that, that open look and that's, the upper I side. mean, and Shelby's doing a good job showing patience against his zone, but that's, from a defensive standpoint, that is what that, that is what Coach Winslow wants them to do. Have to reverse the ball a couple times um, so, so that, you know, they're not, Shelby's not going to get those quick possessions and bust outs in transition. Kessler for the lead in and out, no good. I mean, good look. They've got Absolutely. another good look out of, uh, in transition. And a great box out on the other end to start that. Pass inside, turned over. Harris, nice defense in the defending the post. Left side. That's Heilman into the lane. Tough shot wow. up and in. It's a 9-0 run. Up Heil and leads again. Heilman, no fear going into the lane and finishing that play. The sophomore guard going amongst the Redwoods and scoring. Right side to Casey Lance, goes baseline. It's deflected out uh -huh. of bounds. He'll stay with Shelby. You know, Darius has done a nice job of, of, of defending, uh, defending in the post. Very, they go a base, what we call baseline drift drive. Uh, he gets a hand on it, deflects it out of bounds. Couple substitutions now for the Whippets as Hess and Lance will get a breather. And Brush Goddard's and back in. It's not bad for Coach you know, substituting out a guy like Casey Lance for a guy like Alex <laughs> yeah. Bruscotter and vice versa. And as I said, there's no, the, the thing with Shelby right now, there's no panic in them because they just feel that their depth's going to eventually wear up or down a little bit. Three in the air, too strong, rebound to upper. But you saw that in the game against River Valley that they won in overtime. They just need to stay with a team, and they'll eventually wear you down. It doesn't matter if it's in regulation or in overtime. They can, they have the stamina to keep that pace up the whole time. Heilman backs things out with 70 seconds left in the half. Upper Sandusky leading this one 31-29. Both teams on the second end, the back end of a back-to-back -back night. So we're at, at the one-minute mark. It's going to be interesting now to see if, if, uh, if Upper tries to hold it, but they turn it over. Heilman. Kind, kind of made penetration into an area. No call Ooh. there. Given right back, Darris. Wow. Counted and won. Okay. Wow. Um, wow. Let's look at the replay, Coach. I mean, for, I mean for sure at, at the other end, Bruscott got fouled. Well, I do want to. And then at this end of the floor, well, I do want to see this because it, at, he, at he this, tried to avoid it. At but this, watch, at, at this end know. of the floor, I don't, I don't know if that's an and one or not. It's, a, it's probably a foul. But again, give upper credit for attacking, uh, attacking the basket. And Darris hits the first free throw attempt of the night. He's got 10. It's 34-29. Yeah, that, that looked like a foul on the other end against, yeah. uh, against Upper on Shelby. But, uh, but a great answer. DeVito. You cannot give him any space at all right now. Shooting 50%. Kessler uh, banks are open at bank, Quest Federal the Credit bank Union. Is open. Coach Galloway wanted to travel there, and it looked like it could have been. It, it, it could have been. He kind of one two stepped it on the catch, was kind of off balance when he caught it. Up, Shelby looking to hold for the final shot, but if there's no bucket and turnover, Upward's going to go into the break with the lead. Cross court pass. DeVito's going to try the three, gets it deflected, and that's how the half's going to end. Upper Sandusky with its best half of the season leads this one 37 32. And you can hear them hooting and hollering as they're going in the locker room. Yeah. We'll take a break and be back with the halftime show live and free on the OH Report.
better things to do than to job hunt or scramble to find your next great hire. So let's Ferion do it. We say local is our superpower because we live and work where you live and work. We know the mid-Ohio job market and we're locally owned. So you won't find a partner who's more engaged and literally invested in your success. If you're ready for something better, start with Spherion. Visit us online at midohiojobs.net or call 419-747-7479. But enough about me, let's start the show starring me. Hop in the car, watch it go wrong. I told a ma that I blow soon. Soon. No is a child back in the womb. I'm in a whip, so I got a zoom. They trying to talk, they not in a room. I've been so real, I'm dead to the tomb. They in the way. Coffee light on the soy milk and gently stirred. Don't forget the sugar this time either. I'm doing fine. Don't see the vision, they looking so blind. I hit my lawyer, don't got a time. Cross on my teeth and he dies. Tonight's high school boys basketball broadcast brought to you live and free on the OH Report. Thanks to our generous sponsors, Chris Darris, Edward Jones Investors. Chris Darris, Edward Jones Financial Advisor. Whether you're planning for retirement, saving for college, grandchildren, or just trying to protect the financial future, the ones you care about most, Chris can develop specific strategies to help you achieve your goals. Wilson Tire. At Wilson Tire Company, we sell new and used tires and provide tire services to customers in Upper Sandusky. No matter which location you visit, we'll prove that Wilson Tire Company is the best when it comes to tire services and alignment. West Federal Credit Union, a full gas station. A full service financial institution ready to support you, your family, and your goals. Spherion Mid Ohio, let us help you build the career you want or the awesome team you want. We build real relationships with you so we can understand what you need and get it for you fast. At Frito Lay, we are driven and inspired by our purpose food that matters for life moments as we welcome you back inside the BS Media Productions Halftime Show. Travis Berardi alongside Coach Joe Baylog and what an entertaining first half here between these two teams. Upper Sandusky leading the Shelby Whippets 37-32. I mean, as we mentioned, I think right after the half, it's got to be the best 16 minutes that Upper's played all season. So... You know, the, the now the thing is, can we put 16 more minutes together um, and uh, just be consistent in that 16 minutes? Uh, Shelby, you know, they were kind of maybe in the same situation last night, went into the half trailing, and then I think had a big third quarter, 
uh, to turn the game around. So I'm sure that they're looking kind of at the same thing, but they got to be a little bit concerned with the open looks that they're giving uh, Upper Sandusky, uh, especially against their 2-2-1 full court pressure. And let's take a look at the halftime statistics. 15 to 13 field goals in favor of the Upper Sandusky Rams. Both teams have hit six threes, 12 threes in this first half, nine boards each. However, Shelby out rebounding Upper Sandusky 2-0 on the offensive glass. Turnovers are down six to four. Well, but the thing is, you know, there's not a lot of offensive rebounds out there uh, for Upper to have to grab because they shot it so well. Um, and you give Upper a lot of credit because they've done a pretty good job, um, except for maybe the first two minutes of the game of rebounding at their defensive end of the floor. And they just got to continue that because there were several possessions where you saw three Upper guys, you know, have uh, Shelby guys boxed out six to eight feet away from the basket. Fouls, not a factor. One of one from the line is Upper Sandusky, but a great first half. Let's take a look at some individual scoring. First for the Shelby Whippets. They are led by Alex Bruscotter. He's had three field goals, two of them for beyond the arc. He leads with eight points. Isaiah Ramsey, six points. Max Hess, five points. Braden DeVito, six. Casey Lance, Bryson Baker, Carson Brubaker. Well, Lance and Baker of two. Carson Brubaker has Three. And now the leading scorer of everybody so far, Ethan Kessler, has been hot from beyond the arc. Three threes out of his four field goals. He has 11 points to lead the way. Brock Montgomery and Holden Darris both with 10 points. A balanced attack. That's what Upper Sandusky needed in that first half. Cayman Isles with four points. Justin Heilman with two points. But I guess the key for the second half is can Upper Sandusky maintain this pace? Yep. I mean, it, yeah. and, and the pace the pace hasn't been exceptionally fast. I mean, I think the one thing that Upper's done pretty well is when they've been able to score, they've gotten back in that 2-3 zone. And as long as they're able to uh, prevent Shelby from getting that quick look in transition, that zone has caused Shelby to, that they have to move the ball side to side and can't just get that quick shot, a quick score, and be able to jump right back into their pressure. Um, so the zone's been effective, even though Shelby's done a pretty good job of attacking the zone. The thing that it's done is it slowed them down just enough uh, that uppers, you know, that Shelby may have, it may have prevented Shelby from getting anywhere from five to 10 more possessions in that half. 37-32 the score. We're on pace for both teams going over 70 points right now, but I don't know, 12 combined threes, is that gonna continue? We'll just have to see here in this game between two teams already knowing who won the conference, already knowing their tournament fate. But these are the games that you like to play at the end of the season, Coach, just to get you yourself ready. And it's always interesting to see once a tournament draw happens to see sometimes how teams respond. And, you know, Shelby winning the league last night, that's big. Uh, they got a big game on Tuesday against Lex. Are they looking forward to it? Um, so Shelby gets possession here to start the second half. 20 to 18 upper after one. They then outscored Shelby 17 14 in the second for your 37 turnover. 32 score, and they turn it over to start. Back comes Darris into the lane. Ball fakes, puts it up and in off the glass. He's, he's played really well tonight. And off the bench, too. He didn't even start tonight, but that might have fueled the flames for him a little bit as we'll get a foul and take a look once again at the, as Rafferty would say, the sweet kiss <laughs> off the glass. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the thing that Shelby does so well, they, they don't fret about a made basket. They just get it in transition and go. And right there in that situation, Upper trying to get back into that 2-3 zone. But Shelby was just so quick in transition, they didn't allow him to get set up in it. Lance at the line for two, hits the first free throw of the night for Shelby. That foul was on Sam Smith, his first. In and out on the second, Bruscutter nearly got the rebound. Good box out the there hands. by Darris, though. I mean, he, as I said, he's, he's played well at both ends of the floor so far tonight. Just underway third quarter. Six-point upper Sandusky lead. Gavin Fry gets it inside the Cayman Isles. Ball move, kicks it back out to Smith, then reestablishes and gets it back into Isles. 
Lost it, but Darius is there. He gets into the lane, kicks it left side. Corner three in the air a little short. off the front iron. Rebound. But Casey not necessarily Lance. a bad possession. Got a wide open three with no pressure. And upper shown that they're going to take that shot all night tonight. And they got that ball movement as well. Yep. It took again, took a possession, took some time off the clock. Bruss Cotter doesn't get the fall, but there's a push on the rebound back end. We'll take a look at the replay right here. And you see Cayman Isles yep. pushing with his. So that'll be his. But first. you're not disappointed with that because, again, you're showing great effort to, to box out and try to get an offense, or, or excuse me, a defensive rebound. Uh, so it's Shelby ball baseline out of bounds. Last time they ran a little bit of lob here, right here to Isaiah Ramsey. Gets out the Lance entry pass into Max Hess. Lost the handle. That's a jump ball, and it'll be a turnover. Change of possession back to Upper Sandusky. Great backside rotation on the on Upper's defense um, to take take away the easy look inside. Got a jump ball and. It's upper upper possession here. Darris straight away to Isles, now right side of Montgomery. Inside the Kessler from the elbow. Maybe See. rushed it a bit. It's offline. Rebound yeah. to Bruscotter. But that's 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 a pretty good look. Bruscotter's floater twice yeah. off the rim, though good. Again, Shelby so quick to get the ball up the floor in transition. Isles to Darris. Inside, a bit of a bump. And now we will have a foul on Shelby. That's going to go against Casey Lance, his first. The first on Shelby in the second half. Both teams, only three fouls in the total game. They looked for that. They had that box set where they looked for that little lob to Kessler. Shelby did a good job of taking it away. Fry gets it over to Kessler. Fry. Sat out the first part of the season with a knee injury. He's back to 100% as well, and he's really come in and helped this team out. Yeah, he's able to handle the ball against pressure and, you know, make some pretty good decisions with it. Darris crosses, takes it in the lane, puts it up. Yes, and one. Wow. Holden Darris, have yourself a game, son. He is, he, he is playing well tonight. So for whatever reason, he wasn't in the starting lineup. They may want to. They may want to go with that. Take a look at the. Oh, uh, they didn't. They didn't count the basket. They they called. They called the foul. They called the foul before the before the basket. I just changed my score line too. Still says 39-33. Nope, they did count it. They did count it, but so why it are they getting after the bucket? A foul after the bucket, and he landed. So. Wow, this could be this could be huge here. I mean, this this could be a four-point possession, but they throw it away. Lance in transition. Floater goes right back and gets it though. Ball on the ground, and it's going to be a yep. jump ball. Jump ball. So Isaiah Ramsey now with two fouls. Shelby baseline out of bounds. Nice Great pass. pass. Oh, won't he go down it. though. Right at the front of the rim, just just couldn't put it in. I mean, bounced around and bounced right back out. Montgomery left side gets it inside. Kessler hook shot. No, won't go. Kessler with a good post up. Had him on his back. Had him deep enough that he thought he could, you know, get get that shot. And Baker hits the three. His fifth point, back comes up for Sandusky. Leading by five, five minutes left in quarter number three. Fry. You know, Upper just needs to move the ball here. Need to move the ball from side to side. Make Shelby's defense move. Uh, if you move it side to side, eventually there's going to be a breakdown. Montgomery picks up his dribble, gets it back out to Fry. And now to Darris. They'll reset, but that's all right. You're up five points. You run some clock. And you have to think the Shelby run's coming. Just yeah, it's a yeah, matter of yeah, when. Yeah, you're just trying to trying to prevent that. And right here's a here's a turnover. So Fifth Ram upper turnover Ram and it's thrown Ram down. <laughs> Ramsey with the first flush of the night. It's 41-38, yep. and we'll get a timeout up for Sandusky. Yep. And again, Coach Winslow timeout had a turnover. Again, he wants to try to stop stop the run. 
I don't know, Coach, I want to see the replay. Is this a, is this just a, a fancy layup, or did he get the dunk? Uh, it's it's uh, not, not necessarily a hard uh, slam. It's a, dunk. But it's a dunk, yeah. But it's a dunk. We here at the OH Report appreciate a good dunk. <laughs> But you, you like those highlight reels. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and Ramsey's cap he's a player that's capable of doing it. I just don't think he had his steps down right there to, to, to be able to do it. You want a highlight reel, you watch my highlight of Ontario, Shelby. There were dunks on <laughs> yeah. both teams, but then I was lucky enough to be right underneath the bucket <laughs> when Bruce Cotter throws it off the glass to Lance, who <laughs> emphatically threw it down. You saw that in our free game I as think, well. I think I talked to my son on the way over here, and he – Said he saw a highlight of the Shelby Clearport game last night. He said, "Yeah, we had it. We had someone said, there for that." He too. said Ramsey had a pretty good dunk yes, last he night, did. driving baseline. But balance from Shelby: eight from Ramsey, eight from Bruce Goddard, six from Devito, five from Baker, five from Hess, and then even Lance and Brubaker have three. And it's helping out because then you see on Upper Sandusky, it's three players with double digits. So yeah, Shelby, but the significance with Shelby is this: they they have balance, but the, but the big balance of Bruscott are averaging 22. They've held him down a little bit so far tonight. Yes, um, and so that that's been a key. If you can if you can continue to hold him down, but you know we we have a lot of time left. Yes, we have we over 12 minutes left in this game, and you know he's a player that can score in spurts also. Montgomery, right side with it. Five second count almost got him there. Now he's picked up his dribble, gets it over, turns it over. Yep. Turns into the lane, won't go. Offensive right. rebound, Lance puts it back, won't Again. go. Ooh. And knocked out of bounds, they're saying, by Shelby. Isles will check back in. I mean, Shelby's amped up the pressure in their man to man in the half court right now. And they've, they've done a good job of keeping the ball on one side of the floor. And you've seen when they've been able to do that, now they've been able to jump in a passing lane, get a deflection, and get a steal. So Upper looking for a backdoor play here. They don't get it. Postman steps across. Nice look, Kessler. Yeah. Ooh, big return block, to sender. Big block by uh, Bruscotter. You know Coach is getting into it when he's doing play-by-play -play <laughs> and color commentary. I love it. <laughs> Darius gets the rebound, and now both teams are going a little bit colder. We're only, I think it's an 8-4 quarter so far. Kessler from the free throw line, yes. And Shelby tried to trap him at the top, and Darius does a nice job of breaking the, breaking, splitting the trap, um, and Kessler, you know, open look at 15 feet, and he's comfortable shooting that. So again, when they've, when they've scored here, Upper's going back to this 2-3 zone. We're going to get a bump. Don't give us a chance to take a look at that. I mean, anybody, you're right there inside that half bubble. That's a high percentage shot, especially with nobody on you. Fouls on Ethan Kessler, his first, team's third. So, so Upper needs to be ready on this baseline out of bounds play, the last out of bounds play. They were kind of asleep, and Shelby got a wide open look right away. Um, they need to be aware of, of how they want to defend this. Russ Cotter. Looking inside, gets it to Hess. Back outside, three in the air for Brubaker. Too strong. Rebound fought for. Still on the ground and finally taken out by Darius. Oh, great hustle play by Sam Smith to get that loose ball and, and then get a possession. Smith. And now he, he drives it to the hole, missed it. Looking for a putback. From behind oh, wow. his head off the glass and in. <laughs> Sam Smith, first points of the night. It's 45-38. Makes a hustle play at the defensive end and then makes a hustle play at the offensive end and a circus finish. Seven-point upper lead once again. Brubaker to the baseline, gets it around. DeVito for three. Tried the glass, no good. Great box out. And I think we're going to get a foul here against Cayman Isles. And that is, they were, they were yeah. fighting with Hess. But we got to take a look at this hustle, Coach. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I mean, yeah. <laughs> that's a finished move you probably don't teach in practice. Three from the corner is good. Carson Brubaker, six points for him. He hit two threes. I think both of those are here in the second half, I believe. 
Four point upper lead, Darris kicks it left side, Montgomery, ball fakes, gets into the lane, puts it up, yes. 12 for Brock, it's 47-41. Coming up on 90 seconds left in the third. Good drive, got to the paint, stepped through, um, and was able to get that little six foot runner. Tried threading the needle, it's turned over. Back comes Darris, into the lane, Euro steps, scooped it off the glass, no good. Long rebound out to Bruss Carter. It's a two on three though. Pull up jumper. Yes. And a timeout. Timeout by Shelby, 30 second timeout. And finally he gets one of these shots to fall. This is the third or fourth he's taken. The other three have just rimmed out. Finally he's seeing that ball go through and that might start something for him. Uh, and the, the thing that's hurt upper a little bit here in the third quarter is is they probably, I think, have given up maybe six or eight points off of their turnovers. So, you know, to prevent was what we said, that Shelby run, what you have to do is you cannot turn the ball over because Shelby's so quick of getting the basketball up the floor and converting on those turnovers. Uppers only turned the ball over twice in this second half. Shelby's turned it over three times. Man, but it'll be interesting here coming out of this timeout to see if Shelby changes their defense here at all. I think Ward's starting to spread across the, uh, the OH Report universe. We're up to 130 people watching. We were about 70 for the first half. So there's people noticing this game right now. And the way Shelby's going to a 1-3-1 on. one half court. So they're going to probably look to trap out and of this. And they're extending this to a half court one, not just one bounced inside the three-point line. There's a good ball fake. Great pass fake. Defense jump, and he buries the three. 17 off the bench. It's 50 to 43. We're under a minute left in the third. Skip pass to Brubaker. Now into the corner for Devito. Out the Ramsey. He's going to try the answer. In and out. No good. Rebound to Isles. Back comes Darris across midcourt. And that was that looked like it was just a one play out of the timeout set because they're into their yeah, man to man. Yeah. They get a steal. Bruscotter. Two on two, Euro step, puts it up and in. What a nice move. Really nice move in transition. 12 for Bruss Cotter, we're at 15 seconds. And Shelby's been good. They've been good with their half court defense here in the third quarter. They, they've made things a lot more difficult um, for Upper Sandusky, but Upper's done just enough. Three seconds left, they gotta get a shot off. Darris crosses over, puts it up at the off buzzer, the off the glass, oh, no good. Almost. But that's how oh. the third will end. We had an even third quarter as Upper Sandusky still leads 50 to 45. <laughs> You're gonna wanna stay tuned for money time. And we have that coming up after the break. You're watching Boys High School Hoops live and free on the OH Report. have better things to do than to job hunt or scramble to find your next great hire. So let's Ferion do it. We say local is our superpower because we live and work where you live and work. We know the mid-Ohio job market and we're locally owned. So you won't find a partner who's more engaged and literally invested in your success. If you're ready for something better, start with Spherion. Visit us online at midohiojobs.net or call 419-747-7479. What time is it, Coach? Money time. It is money time here at Upper Sandusky. Rams leading by five over Shelby. Travis Berardi alongside Coach Joe Baylog. And Upper, they're sticking with the whip. It's through three, but can oh, they Darius finish? Darius gets a wide open look at the top. Yes! Hold and Darius have yourself an evening. He has 20. Ooh. It's 53-45 Upper. Big, big possession there to start the fourth. Shelby looking for the answer off the yep. rim and in. Lance so finally gets one to bounce in for him. He missed a couple bunnies, but gets it about from 16 feet. That's his fifth. It's 
And still, you have to think that run from Shelby's going to be coming here. Fry from the block, in and out, gets his own rebound. That's actually Montgomery, and he's fouled, will go to the line. The hustle of Upper Sandusky just a little bit more than Shelby's right now. The great, great shot fake there by Montgomery. Missed the 12-foot jumper, but this has happened a couple times here in the second half where a guy's missed his shot and been able to get his own rebound, either get a put back or get to the free throw line. Now it becomes important. I think what is our stats is that uh, um, upper shoots, what, in the 50% from the free throw line? Yes, 57, I believe. Yeah. Take a look at that right now. They shoot 57.6. Now interesting. Missed them both, though. Wow. But Kessler gets the rebound, throws it off of uh. Darius, though. And back comes Shelby. Ramsey's going to be fouled. He'll go to the line. I mean, inter interesting here, Coach Galloway takes Brescott out of the lineup. So apparently there, there's something that he wasn't very pleased with that Alex uh, is not doing very well. But uh, he'll probably let him sit here maybe for 30 seconds to a minute, probably get him right back in. Ramsey hits his ninth point. Makes it a five-point game. He has a chance to make this four right here. He does. So that was huge. Upper miss two. Shelby gets two free throws. Four-point swing. Um, Four-point swing. And that, you know, it, games like this are going to come down many times to free throw shooting. Right side to Fry. Looking for Isles inside. Stead gives it to Darius. Can he hit another one? Too strong, but Montgomery Offensive there rebound. once again. Offensive rebounds here in the second half have been huge for Upper. And that's four in the second half. In the past, already. Upper's been on the other end of that, of, of not being able to stop teams from getting offensive rebounds. Darius from the elbow crosses over, and he's going to get wrapped up. That's going to go against Carson Brubaker. That's his second, the team's fourth. So as we and said, comes Bruscott. Bruscott will get about 30 seconds. Coach Galloway emphasizing something to him and then getting him right back in the game. Got to get it in. And that's going to go against Cayman Isles. That'll be his third. And once again, that, Shelby just picking up that defensive yeah. pressure on an inbounds. Yeah. That foul might have been a foul that could have went either way. Yeah. Fourth, fourth foul on Isles. Now, that, would it matter who gets possession, who touches the ball first? Because it did look like Bruce Carter touched it yeah. first, but didn't have the position. Yeah, I mean, it just kind of a bang bang play. Could have probably gone either way. Bruce Carter at midcourt gets a double screen. Little horn, horn set where they set a high, high ball screen. Inside the Ramsey in the corner, double team, but they get it back out to Bruce Carter. Brubaker open, thought about the three. Gets it to Lance. Lance drives it in, puts up the floater. Charge, oh. offensive foul. Sam Smith again. As you take a look at the rebound. Sam Smith has not played very many minutes tonight, but he has had some big possessions. He, he was uh, waiting for it, too. Jumped yep. in, had position, took we, the charge. We had the one where he had the loose ball and then went down and, and had the put back. Now he takes a charge coming in. That's, that's big. So it's role players that could make a difference in a game like this. Uh, and we're going to get a ooh. foul now against Braden DeVito. And I believe that is the sixth. Yep. So both, both, both teams in the bonus both now. Both teams with six, and that – as we mentioned, that could be huge. Shelby, a great free throw shooting team, shooting over 70% as a team. Uh, upper Sandusky in the 50s. Oh, Kessler. Steps out of bounds. Again, Brescott, are, you know, after that 30-second kind of reminder from Coach Galloway has come in and has made two good defensive plays, got a deflection and a steal, and then just forced a turnover there by having uh, upper step out of bounds. Left side to Ramsey, back out. In the Bruss Cotter. From the elbow, turnaround jumper, short, rebound to upper. Smith with the jump uh, stop, gives it to Darius. Darius, Darius Euros gets the man up and in. Man, he has been unbelievable tonight. 22. That is, that is a great drive and a great shot fake. 
But on the other the end, a smooth DeVito score for his eighth point. You don't see very many freshmen that are able to do that or are willing to do that in a game, you know, when the game's on the line. And from the baseline with no backboard in front of you. Deep three for Montgomery off the side iron rebound to Brubaker. Shelby looking to cut this back to a one possession game. Russ Goddard along the baseline. He pulls up a little bit off, but Lance is there with the rebound. Short-armed it, and Darris comes out with it. Lance has had several of those rebounds where he just has not been able to finish. Oh, well, he tried to go with the two-man game, but it's turned back over. Both teams now with ten turnovers. Russ Goddard, Brew Baker. Now to DeVito for three from the other corner. No good off the back iron. Rebound out to Montgomery, and they're out and running. Gets upper, it to Kessler. Upper. Upper needs to just slow it down here. Smith gets it to Darris. Slow it down, get ball reversal. And they are going to back it out. Shelby's, Shelby's struggling a little bit defensively right now. Great backdoor cut by Darris. A little too strong, though. Rebound to Lance. It. Midway point of the fourth. And that's knocked out of bounds. And will stay with Shelby. But Upper maintains the five-point lead here with four minutes left in the game. But four points for Shelby is like, yeah. I mean, the they can snap. they can get it quick. Again, out of bounds here. Sam Smith checks out to a great ovation. The hustle he had yep. in that set of possessions was yeah. His exactly his, his few Winslow minutes wanted. tonight are exactly what you look at for out of somebody like that. It's coming in and giving the team a lift. Taking advantage of your time, Lance deep three wow. hits it. Casey Lance makes it a one point game with his eighth point. That was huge. And you're feeling momentum kind of shift a little yep. bit now. But Upper Sandusky's been able to hold that off a couple times already. Give and go inside. And roll. Back out. The fry. Just, just got to show patience here and reverse the ball. In the Darris. Darris. Tough shot. No good. Too strong. Rebound to Bruscotter. Shelby with a chance to take the lead now. Bruscotter's going to try it himself. Stops. Gets it back out. DeVito for the lead. Yes. Oh. Back to back threes by Shelby gives them the two point lead. Three minutes left in regulation, 57 55. Timeout. Coach Winslow and Shelby, they're getting fired up as we take a look at the bucket. I mean, Braden DeVito's not your normal freshman. No, uh, not at all. And, and I guess at this time of the year, you're really not a freshman, but, but we've seen him throughout the season has just stepped up and had no fear of taking and making big shots. Um, and that's that's why Shelby's so dangerous because you know, they they have uh, four or five guys that are not afraid to take that big shot, um, and Devito being one of them. And we just said, just like that, a game can change. Four points yep. now up to a two point lead. A six zero Shelby run on two threes has well, them up fifty seven fifty five. A little bit of a reset for you folks. Possession arrow with Shelby. Both teams have six fouls, so the next non player control foul will be a one and one. Well, and, and Upper's missed a couple shots right there, man. Darius has missed a couple drives, you know, putting it off the glass. Um, yeah, a couple and, and so, hard shots. So, again, some of that could be fatigue uh, because Shelby's been able to shove a little bit more um, than uh, Upper. But Upper's got to be happy where they're at right now. Three minutes yeah. to go, two-point ball game. Possession. Um, right now, coming out of the timeout, you want to get a good look. Um, and Upper's done a good job coming out of timeouts and getting the look they want to get. So this is a big possession here with 3.06 to go in the ball game. Inbound to Fry. Spins, gets it to Montgomery. Now to Kessler, who's kind of been quiet here in the second half. Got to dribble it. And it's a five-second call. Yeah. Yeah, you got to. You got to understand that, you know, if you have the ball in your hand, you got 4.9, and if you put it on the floor, you got another 4.9, and if you pick it up, you got another 4.9. So actually, you can almost hold the ball for 15 seconds. So now what it looks like is Shelby is going to maybe make Upper come out of this zone. Um, and so it's going to be interesting. Uh, Coach Armstrong just shrugs his shoulders like, I. We're going to play Upper Sandusky's game and slow things down. Well, I don't know. I guess 
here, here's here's my thinking on this: is you have you have just you, you've just uh, had the momentum. Uh, Shelby has taking the air out of the ball now. And you're taking the air out. You know, if you're upper, you know you you might right now let the clock run down and see if you can get a stop or a foul, uh, a one and it, one. Hope for a miss. Yeah. You still have a chance for overtime. Did you see the highlight a couple days ago on Sports Center? The game that finished four to two. Yeah, I didn't really get a chance to see exactly how that happened. And now we're yep. starting out. Looks like they're matching up now. Well, this reminds me of the uh, North Carolina State Championship game where Houston started <laughs> taking the air of the ball way too early and yeah. allowed North Carolina State to come back. Yeah, well, they haven't gone totally man to man. They're matched up on Brush Goddard. Denying him the basketball, and the, the other ones are in a are in a are in a triangle. Now it looks like they're going to match up in in man to man. Shelby by two, 80 seconds left. Devito closely guarded, gets it to Ramsey. Now over the Lance. Lance going to take it in the lane. Offensive oh. foul. He kind of kicked him in the chest, and that's what got the call. Well, Other than that, he got stripped early. I, I think right he wa I think there. he wanted. I think he wanted to dunk it, <laughs> and uh, you know he thinking about dunking. He lost control of it. And if he would have not gotten the foot into the <laughs> chest of yeah. Fry, it wouldn't have been anything. He probably would have lost that out right. of bounds. But instead, now it's his third foul, and now Upper down two with 60 seconds left. We'll get possession. Darris gets it off to Fry. Over to Kessler and then back out to Darris. 48 seconds left. Darris over right side, back out to him. They're going to reset. They're spreading the floor. Better dribble it. Gets around his defender, kicks it back out to Fry. 32 seconds left. Darris once again. He leads all scores with 22 as he backs it out. 26 seconds. Nearly bumped for a foul. Instead, he'll... Get off his defender and reset. Coach Winslow getting That's ready to call a timeout here. Now he does with 15 seconds left. So talking about Shelby taking the air out of the ball, mm -hmm. the play doesn't work. And now Upper with 15 seconds left, probably going to take the final shot. They going for overtime or are we going for the win here, Coach? Mm -hmm. They've had well, some sharpshooters that could hit Kessler, Montgomery, Darius. Yeah, I mean, I think you're going to try to get the best shot you can. And if it's an open three, I don't think it's necessarily gonna, they're going to be saying, hey, we're, we're going to take a three. But, but if you're in, if you're in uh, upper shoes, you're looking to get a shot to win the game. You, you really don't want to go to overtime. You have nothing to lose. Yeah, you have you nothing, have nothing to, lose. to lose here. Um, You've played one of the best teams in Division II in this area yep. to the wire. Yep. You're coming out with your head held high to chance, and you have a shot at the win here no matter what. If it doesn't go in, you had the shot at the win at the end. It wasn't like you, you hit a three to cut it to two at the buzzer. This is a big chance for Upper Sandusky, but nonetheless, they played like they've wanted to all season. Yeah. And both, team, both teams are in the bonus now too. So, again. And this isn't anything against Shelby. They're just getting the best. Yeah. Effort from that's what, Upper Sandusky that, team. That's the lesson. I mean, Shelby needs to understand at, at this point of the season, they're going to get everybody's best effort. Yes. Um, whether, whether, you know, a team's won 15 games, or in this case, they've won three. Inbound to Montgomery. 15 seconds left in regulation. Shelby by two. Montgomery into Darris. Seven seconds. Six seconds. Out to Kessler. Kessler picks up the dribble. Two seconds. He double dribbled with 1.7. And a timeout. He picked up the dribble, then dribbled again. So now we're going to get a, an inbounds, a quick foul, free yeah. throws, and then a heave, desperation yeah. heave. Yeah. Tough break for Upper Sandusky. I mean, it looked like they came out of the timeout and really wanted to post up uh, Darius inside. He caught it at about 12 feet, but then really didn't look to score it. Um, and then they just kind of panicked. Um, and when when you have when you have a season like Upper has, these are the things that happen. I mean, just just go down the the road to Columbus and ask the Ohio State Buckeyes. That's oh boy, yeah. kind of the same thing that's happened to them. They, yeah. you know, they they fought hard in games. You had chances to, 
you know, win games, you just don't do it. And that's kind of the difference between having a good season and struggling. And, and that's, that's kind of the story of upper season right now. So 1.7 seconds remain. We're going to get an inbounds by Shelby. They have to get this in. But you got to think, no matter what, the ball is going to be coming down this end. Yeah, even you want to. Well, you want to get it in, um, but you, yeah, you'd prefer the ball going away from uppers, uh, going bucket. away yeah. from uh, away from them. And now it's looking for Lance. Throws it in to Ramsey. Ramsey's fouled with 1.4, and that's going to do it. So Shelby got Upper Sandusky's best effort and is going to survive here. But what a game, Coach. Yeah, you, you really got to give Upper Sandusky a lot of credit. Um, I mean, at this point of the season, you know, when you've only won three games, uh, you know, you could, you could pack it in. They surely have not packed it in. Um, so the hope is that... You know, they, you know they, they have, I think, Colonel Crawford next week, right? Yes. And they have Crawford here. And they, they lost uh, by two to Crawford right. earlier on. And then, you, you, you know, you got a team in Elida in the sectional that, you know, you have a chance to beat. So um, trying to look at it in a positive way. If you're Shelby, I mean, the one thing that uh, Coach Galloway hopefully is that, you know, you don't have to always learn from, from losing. You can learn from winning. And they, they need to learn some things here. Deep throw, intercepted, and that'll do it. Shelby escapes the mountaintop with a 59-55 victory. We'll take a break. When we come back, our Quest Federal Credit Union MVP, as well as our post-game show right here, live and free on the OH Report. to do than to job hunt or scramble to find your next great hire. So let Spherion do it. We say local is our superpower because we live and work where you live and work. We know the mid-Ohio job market and we're locally owned. So you won't find a partner who's more engaged and literally invested in your success. If you're ready for something better, start with Spherion. Visit us online at midohiojobs.net or call 419-747-7479. Enough about me. Let's start the show. Starring me. Hop in the car, watch it go vroom, vroom. I told them all that I was soon, soon. No, it's a child back in the womb. Oh, told us step back. I need my broom, broom. Hop in the car, watch it go vroom. I'm in a whip, so I got a zoom. They trying to talk, they not in a room. I've been so real, I'm dead to the tomb. They in the way. Coffee light on the soy milk and gently stirred. 
Don't forget the sugar this time either. I'm doing fine. Don't see the vision, they looking so blind. I hit my lower, I don't got a time. Cross on my T's and he dying. Tonight's boys high school basketball broadcast brought to you live and free thanks to our generous sponsors, Chris Darris, Edward Jones, Investors. Whether you're planning for retirement, saving for college, grandchildren, or just trying to protect the financial future of the ones you care about most, Chris can develop specific strategies to help you achieve your goals. Wilson Tire at Wilson Tire Company, we sell new and used tires and provide tire services to customers in Upper Sandusky. No matter which location you visit, we'll prove that Wilson Tire Company is the best when it comes to tire services and alignment. Quest Federal Credit Union, a full-service financial institution ready to support you, your family, and your goals. Spherion Mid-Ohio, let us help you build the career you want or the awesome team you want. We build real relationship, real relationship with you so we can understand what you need and get it for you fast. And Frito-Lay, we are driven and inspired by our purpose. Food that matters for life's moments. Thank you all for sponsoring tonight's high school basketball live stream and all of our live streams to allow us to bring you these games live and free right here on the OH Report. As we wait our post-game MVP, we'll welcome you inside the post-game show. And Coach, that was a fun one. Upper Sandusky played its best basketball of the season and gave Shelby quite the test. Yes, and I mean, um, I'm sure that Coach Galloway's not necessarily happy, but to be, probably to be honest with you, this game here will probably serve a lot better than if they came in here and blew Upper Sandusky out. Because one, Upper was able to attack what Shelby was good at, which was that 2-2-1 two, two, full court pressure. Upper did a great job against it. And Shelby kind of had to dig a little bit deeper and show that they could really defend in the half court in their man-to-man. -man. And they did that in the fourth quarter. As you said, Upper only had five points. The other thing is, you know, you're saying at this time of the year, we want to be prepared for the tournament. This game kind of gave you a, a preview of what things could happen in the tournament. Number one, that you were behind. Number two, you had to get stops to get the ball back and you had to make plays offensively. And Shelby was able to do that down the stretch, which shows why, you know, they're now eight, what are 18 and two um, going into the last week of the season. Let's take a look at the final statistics for the evening. 59-55, the final 23 field goals to 22. However, Shelby won more three, 10 to eight, two more threes, 10 to eight, five to six from the line, only one and two from the line was Upper Sandusky. Uh, boards, Upper Sandusky out-rebounded Shelby in the second half and on the boards there. Uh, turnovers were the same, but seven turnovers in the second half for Upper Sandusky really changed things. Fouls were pretty much the same as well, so a, a very evenly played game by both sides. And if you take a look at those turnovers, those turnovers didn't come against what Shelby typically makes you turn it over with, which is that full court 2-2-1 two, two, full court pressure where Shelby created the turnovers was in their man-to-man -man defense in the half court, um, which, you know, as Coach Galloway watches this tape, that's probably what's gonna make him happy, that they were able to um, do that and create that here um, in the fourth quarter. All right, we got our MVP making his way over here. So, as we get that set up, we'll take a break. You're watching High School Hoops Live and Free on the OH Report.
you have better things to do than to job hunt or scramble to find your next great hire. So let's Ferion do it. We say local is our superpower because we live and work where you live and work. We know the mid-Ohio job market and we're locally owned. So you won't find a partner who's more engaged and literally invested in your success. If you're ready for something better, start with Spherion. Visit us online at midohiojobs.net or call 419-747-7479. Well, here we're here with our Quest Federal uh, credit MVP, Isaiah Ramsey. Uh, Isaiah, not easy tonight. You got to give Upper a lot of credit for how they came out and played. Um, I guess what impressed me the most was, uh, you know, as I've watched your team a little bit, the 2 2 1 full court pressure has been kind of where you created turnovers. What you guys did tonight in the second half, especially in the fourth quarter, was you set down in man to man defense uh, in the half court and were able to create turnovers and kind of turn the game around. Uh, so maybe talk a little bit about that adjustment that you guys made. Uh, you know, our 1-3-1 one and our 2-2-1 uh, two, two, wasn't working out well. So, you know, we had to sit down and play solid defense. And, you know, they have a really good shooter, so it was tough. They were shooting out of our zone, and we couldn't match up back to get them. So, you know, we tried our best, and we had to play a hard grit defense in a 50. And I know you took kind of the – looked like you took the load on your shoulders because you matched up with Darius because he had a heck of a game tonight, but you did a great job on him in the fourth quarter. You know, I've – in the fourth quarter, I reflected on how I played him in the uh, other three quarters, and I looked up, and, you know, he had way too many points. So I did everything I could to shut him down, and, you know, we got an ugly win. So, But as I said, you know, I don't, I'm not sure what Coach Galloway guys told you guys in the locker room, but, it, but in probably looking back at this, uh, this game might be better for you guys in the long run rather than if you just came in here and blew them out because it kind of put you in a tournament-type atmosphere where – Possessions became really important. You guys trailed late, but you found a way to win the basketball game. Yeah, you know, this game, you know, we went back and forth, and I think it came down to, you know, free throws and turnovers at the end. You know, we had a lot of turnovers at the end, and that last minute was definitely a tournament-like atmosphere. Well, congratulations to you guys. I know you don't have much time to rest. You got a big game coming on Tuesday. Then you got your final home game of the year uh, against Ontario on Friday. So. Uh, you guys are going to be able to get some rest, but as always, I'd like to give anybody a shout out and go ahead and look in the camera. Uh, shout out to my team, my coaches, and my family. All right. Congratulations and uh, best of luck next week. Thank you. Back here at Upper Sandusky to wrap things up this evening as Shelby moves to 18-2 on the season, coming from behind to knock off Upper Sandusky. Travis Berardi back here with head coach Joe Baylog. Well done on the MVP interview. That was, good, that was good stuff, coach. You're always afraid to do it, but you do so well when you're asking the questions. 
Anyway. I don't, I don't like the pressure. <laughs> eh. Oh, now you don't. Uh, let's go over some individual scoring. We already had our stats, but uh, first four upper Sandusky. What an effort by them. Holden Darris leads everybody 22 points. Ethan Kessler, 13 points. Brock Montgomery, 12 points. Cayman Isles with four. Sam Smith and Justin Heilman with two each. But the thing was, Kessler and Montgomery only two points each in that second half. That was a little bit of a difference yeah. between the first and the second half. Shelby was able to really shut them down there. But then for the Whippets, 12 points each from Ramsey and Alex Bruscotter. 11 from Braden DeVito. Eight from Casey Lance. Six from Brew Baker. Five each from Baker and Hess. Score by quarter, 2018 Upper Sandusky after one. They outscored Shelby 17-14 after two, making it 37-32. It was an even third quarter, 13 all, 50-45. to But then the defense of Shelby wearing Upper Sandusky down. They outscored Upper Sandusky 14-5 in that fourth quarter. And there's the difference right there, Coach. Yeah, I mean, I think if you take a look, both, both teams had good scoring balance. Shelby's had good scoring balance all year. The big difference is... Russ Goddard is 10 below his average. Um, yeah. But, that, but the other the other part we mentioned, though, too, is is Shelby kind of had to, you know, dig a little bit deeper into their bag and kind of find out a little bit more about themselves. And I think they found that out tonight is that, you know, they can they can shut people down in the, in the half court. And I thought the play of DeVito and Ramsey were really key uh, at, at the defensive end, but also at the offensive end. DeVito hit some big shots. But I like really what Ramsey said here afterwards. Is he looked up the scoreboard and said, man, th this kid has too many points. And he was the guy that jumped on Darius and, and did a great job of shutting him down in the fourth quarter. And that's what you're going to need when it comes to tournament yeah. time, too. That, that player that will say, you're doing too much. I need to shut you down right now yeah. so we can have a chance to win. Yeah. Um, that'll pretty much wrap things up on a quick game, too. A, a brisk one-hour contest between these two teams 59 50 times 59 55 Shelby with the victory up next for Shelby a very big one it mm -hmm. could very possibly be possibly be a district semifinal matchup a week later or two weeks later as they host Lexington I will be there hopefully finding a spot I'll have to get there about two hours early to find a parking spot at least but uh, that's gonna be a packed house I will have a highlight for you on Tuesday night as for upper Sandusky they'll be back here next Friday Live and free as they host Colonel Crawford, a team they only fell two by two. So can they get a, a big rivalry victory to get some of that momentum going into the tournament, Coach? Yeah, I mean. Uh, you can build you off know, of this game, though, yeah, definitely. You, you, you can build. I mean, it, and it's kind of been that. It's just been a tough year for Upper. I mean, they've, they've been in some games and just haven't been able to finish them. And, uh, you know, Coach Winslow is going to try to approach this week with that positive attitude and, you know, get you in this season on your home floor against a rival. Um, and then, you know, with the draw that they have in the tournament against an Elida team, you know, that's a team that they can beat in the tournament. So that, that, that'll, that'll be interesting. And then, of course, you know, Shelby, the game with Lex on Tuesday, um, and then you're, they're going to be at home to finish up their season. Um, excuse me, I guess they're at Ontario yeah. uh, to finish up the season. They're not at Shelby, they're at Ontario to finish up their season uh, to, to wrap up league play and then, and then get into the tournament. Yeah, that could clinch an outright championship yeah. for them. Uh, our next broadcast will be the video podcast, and I believe we'll be at, at Loudonville with a live look in. Myself, you, and Hayden Gray will be down there. But the OH Report video podcast next up for us on Monday. But first, tomorrow, Super Bowl Sunday. Enjoy the game. Coach, real quick, Eagles or Chiefs? Uh, Packers. Packers. <laughs> <laughs> well, then the Steelers are winning at uh, that case. I, I would say, I, I would say uh, right now I, I would have to go with the Eagles. I think it's going to – it's going to be uh, – it's kind of maybe a little bit like tonight's game is that uh, the Chiefs would want a lot of possessions. The Eagles won, a, won only a few. And if it's just a fewer – the fewer possessions, the better. And I think the Eagles' defense is going to be able to handle the Chiefs. Uh, I just – I have a bold statement. A Kelsey is going to win a Super Bowl this year. <laughs> That's all I got to say. Hey, put, put, put that out on a bet. You're going to win some money. You're darn right <laughs> I will. But that will wrap things up here from the mountaintop. Uh, a long day for Joe and I. We had two really good games. One, a defensive battle. I should say good. Yeah. But this one, a lot of scoring. But we want to thank everybody that helped make things possible. Joshua Banks again on the camera. Chris Darris, Edward Jones Investors are – Scoreboard sponsor with Wilson Tire, Quest Federal Credit Union, our MVP sponsor, BS Media Productions, free halftime post game sponsor, Sphere on Mid Ohio, and Frito Lay are commercial sponsors. Also, want to thank the fine folks, Brad Ehrman, his final 
home game as an athletic director basketball-wise coming up on Friday. He's retiring after 20 years. Uh, so thank you to him and everybody at Upper Sandusky High School for allowing us to bring every Lady Rams and Rams basketball home game this season. we got one more next Friday night. Most importantly, I want to thank you, the fans, for watching in what was a very, very entertaining basketball game. Shelby comes back from five down in the fourth to win at 59-55. For Coach Joe Baylog, I'm Travis Berardi saying so long from Upper Sandusky.